Hey guys, Weed Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Saturday mountain weather update, and we are hip deep in the flow now. The atmospheric river underway. Snow has already started to accumulate. This is Kirkwood, my first stop in the Sierra, uh, reporting about seven inches of new snow, and you've still got a lot more to go. There are two total storm systems. This is the first. The second one is going to be colder with lower rain snow line, lower snow levels. So um, this first one, variable snow levels running anywhere from seven, eight to 9,000 feet, which of course has a significant effect on total snow accumulation. All right, so that is Kirkwood. Let me take you up to Revelstoke. They're reporting at least a foot of new snow, and you've still got a little bit of additional snow yet to go today. You can see some flakes still coming down up there at Revelstoke, but undoubtedly a powder day up there through a lot of interior BC. Revelstoke, Kicking Horse, Red Mountain, all going to be exceptional today. In northern Colorado, this is Steamboat, uh, reporting three to six inches of new snow, and obviously still snowing there. Look at that beautiful view down at the gondola cam and then at the top of the Thunderhead, snow coming down. And, and I talked about this the last couple of days, the spillover effect. It's hard to cage and stop the atmospheric river. There's just so much moisture the atmosphere has to ring out. And so, yeah, while the Wasatch is going to get a lot, while the Tetons are going to take a lot, there's still a lot of overrun snow that's going to dump down into the northern mountains of Colorado. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Up in the Tetons, just getting started, reporting nine inches of new snow accumulation in the last 24 hours. Undoubtedly going to be a great day up there in the Tetons. And again, just the start of uh, what's going to be a moist flow up there for days. This is, um, this is solitude. You can see a ski patrol getting everything ready up there. Some snow coming down reporting three or four inches of new snow accumulation. You can see that on the uh, the snow stake right there. And I'm gonna show you radar here in a sec, and, and you'll see that, th that the waves of moisture will come um, with breaks. So again, there will be waves of moisture that hit the, the Wasatch. Um, into Colorado, there's Breck, some light snow coming down. There's Loveland. Um, you can see it uh, from the top of chair nine, obviously shrouded. And um, another thing I haven't really mentioned is going to be the wind. This is going to be a very windy day across a lot of the West. Very windy, for example, here in Colorado, 50, 60, 70 mile an hour wind gusts, even higher if you're going to be up in the Northern Mountains, especially in the Rocky Mountain National Park District, Indian Peaks, probably 80, 90, 100 mile an hour winds up there. So we're dealing with a lot of wind. Of course, that's going to be the case in the Sierra as well with this, uh, this jet plowing in up there. Okay, radar, there it is, that direct west to east flow with the atmospheric river just sending waves of moisture in. So you can kind of see it playing out. A good example would be in Salt Lake here, the radar out of Salt Lake. The Wasatch, obviously you're, you have snow, but look at the breaks in the action, and then you have another package of moisture behind that. So you're going to get these waves that come in, and there'll be breaks in between. Um, a little bit of moisture trying to work its way into western Colorado. We'll look at that in a minute. Here's your flow headed towards the Tetons coming out of Idaho. Um, you know, at times that flow is going to shift back to the north and be directly over you. At times it will kind of sink to the south. So a little bit of oscillation there. In Colorado, some moisture trying to overrun the western slope. And of course, we're getting that up in the northern mountains and up along the continental divide. You can kind of see that wind signature up over the Indian Peaks and Rocky Mountain National Park. And yes, there is going to be some accumulation along I-70. Um, from the western slope all the way through Vail into Summit County at times, maybe one or two inches of accumulation. Your better accumulation in Colorado does not come until down the road. So it's a little bit of a waiting game. Uh, here's your river flow right into the central and northern mountains of um, the Sierra here. The central zones of the Sierra. Look at Tahoe just starting to get in on the action. Uh, but you've still got a lot of snow yet to go. And again, variable snow levels with this first storm system, which will affect overall accumulation. This is a pretty cool image here. We'll go to satellite. So this is going to be a look at uh, essentially uh, moisture in the atmosphere, but this is what you use to really help spot the atmospheric river. This is um, advectable, precipitatable water. Precipitatable uh, water is just a, a look at in the column how much uh, moisture, how much you could actually wring out uh, of actual measurable moisture. And you can see the stream all the way back. This is the Pineapple Express um, all the way back from Hawaii and being fed into uh, California. Notice what happens. It does send 
packages of moisture into the interior. And you can kind of see the axis of the jet here, kind of like this. So a lot of Colorado's missing out on this, but the northern mountains, the western slope could get it. Of course, everybody else is in direct line with this flow pattern. Um, so, so precipitatable water, a great way to kind of inspect this. Okay, let's talk a bit about um, some special requests here. Um, I've had some questions, some emails. Um, what about the Tetons? I'm going to be up there. Should I set up shop in the Tetons? Well, between today and the 5th, another 3 feet of a cube. So basically, you've got 9 inches. We're going to add 3 feet to that. Um, big Sky, 1 to 2 feet between today and 2.5. Crystal Mountain up in Washington, 12 to 15 inches between today and the 3rd. Um, Yellowstone, three to five feet of accumulation between today and the fifth. The Wind Rivers, five to six feet of accumulation. So any thoughts of a wintertime Gannett Peak are probably out the window at this point. Um, okay, here we go with uh, the timeline. Big Sky, the Wasatch Tetons, Colorado Interior, BC, Tahoe in the Northeast. So really drilling, drilling down on the exact dates. Big Sky, you've got moderate snow today. And then heavy afternoon, two, two, three, four, and 5. So a great stretch there with that second storm system. And the Wasatch heavy today and tomorrow. And then a break. And then the second storm, 2, 5, 6, and 7. And it looks heavy and a little bit colder. Tetons 2, 1 through 2, 5, pretty heavy, with some breaks in between, obviously, as the jet stream wobbles. Colorado 2, 1 through 2, 2, light to moderate, especially moderate in the northern mountains, maybe even heavy at times, around Steamboat. 2, 5 through 2, 8 is probably the prime time for the rest of the state. That's when the whole storm system and the trough will swing through the state of Colorado. Interior BC, light to moderate today and then light. Tahoe, heavy today, heavy on the 4th, and then moderate to heavy 2627. In the northeast, several different moderate chances of snow. Okay, let's drill down. Um, so this is going to be Alta, Utah. Effective 9,000 feet on this forecast mediogram. You can see the snow continues today and probably the first half of tomorrow. This cranks out another couple of feet of accumulation um, with wind gusts of 30 to 40, 45 miles per hour at times, helping to crank out that snow accumulation. And then what you don't see here is the next storm between 242526. Uh, and that could bring heavy snow accumulation. So again, we're just kind of getting started here with a lot of this stuff. Okay, let's move into um, the Tetons. Okay, so we talked about this forecast yesterday. <clears throat> um, so this is up at uh, this is up at a uh, technically Jenny Lake, but this is closer to eighty five hundred to nine thousand feet. This is eighty six hundred feet. Um, so representative of that corridor between say Jackson Hole ski area and the north side of the Grand Teton, um, at that middle elevation. This cranks out uh, 32 inches of snow, and, and again, you've got additional snow down the road as well. So this is not the end of it here, but this through this, this first batch, today, tomorrow, and the third, 32 inches of snow on top of what you've already got. And look at the wind gusts, 40 to 50 mile an hour. So again, very windy with this, uh, this setup. Okay, let me go to Colorado. I've got one time height forecast. Bam! I mean, you can really see the flow here. The atmospheric river. I mean, that, you're just looking at a ribbon of continuous moisture over the top of Steamboat in the northern mountains. And this is a 72-hour forecast. You read that from right to left. So whatever's on the left is coming. And it's just there. I mean, you're, you're in it. Okay, the jet stream forecast. Uh, we'll start this at about uh, 11 o'clock today. Um, you can see the powerful jets. So that's what I'm looking for. These are jet stream level winds at about 30,000 feet. I want the brighter colors. I want the reds, the tans, the pinks. That represents the stronger winds, the guiding winds, a lot of the lifting winds, um, the storm track. And that is just a bullseye for the West right now. Here we are late today. <clears throat> Here we are early tomorrow morning, targeting many of the same areas. But you'll notice the jet kind of wobbles around a little bit. That's how you determine, I mean, where is that heavy plume of snow going to be? It just kind of moves around. Um, this is late on February 2nd, Sunday. Uh, now watch what happens here. This is late on Monday the 3rd. Here's midday on the 4th. Here's late on the 4th. So this would act technically be the start of the second storm. You can almost see the dip in the jet coming through. Um, this will be a colder edition. The whole jet's sinking to the south at this point, so targeting some new areas. 
across the west here. It's early on the 5th. You can see the storm system moving through Wyoming and Colorado. And then look at the next jet streak coming in. This is uh, midday on the 5th, targeting more of central California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado. This is where the rest of Colorado is going to get its best accumulation as the jet stream comes to the south and targets the rest of the state. Here we are by late on the 6th. Here we are uh, late on the 7th, and you can see, look at the look at the big, the, the final trough here coming in um, to the west on early 8, late on the 8th. So you can see how things shift over time, big time wind over Colorado. Um, that'd be about 200 mile an hour winds over the top of the state. Okay, let's take a look at uh, forecast snow accumulation over time. <clears throat> So we'll start this at about lunchtime today. And again, the light blue colors, that corresponds to under three inches on the legend. Green, three to six. Yellows, over six. Reds would be 10 plus. Okay, so basically this is where it's snowing right now. We talked about all those places. All right, here we are late today. Yeah, okay, so here's uh, midday on Sunday, February 2nd. You can see how the plume's kind of shifting around. Um, but very heavy over the Tetons, Yellowstone, the Wind Rivers, um, southern and central Idaho getting smashed, southern Oregon, northern California. I mean, look at those readings. Look at those colors over the top of the Tetons. <laughs> and then the whole plume kind of shifts up into Montana. You're going to get a good shot of snow through Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, and Red Lodge. Here we are early on Monday the 3rd. Here's midday. There's late on the 3rd. And then the whole thing kind of shifts back because here's the second storm starting to move into California. Here's early on the 4th. Look at the Sierra. Now that snow goes all the way down to Mammoth and you're going to get probably a couple of feet out of this at Mammoth. Here's late on the 4th. Here's early on the 5th. I mean, the Tetons, I, just incredibly, uh, really heavily targeted. Um, here's early on the 6th. All right, now it starts to make its move here early on the 7th, back into the Wasatch, and then it moves into Colorado. Here's lunchtime on the 8th. The whole storm begins to move through Colorado. So you can see, I mean, we're talking about a week's worth of snow here. We've, we've got a long way to go. Um, so my snow forecast, all of today through the 5th. Keep in mind, it will snow beyond the 5th through a lot of places on this map. Um, so this will get us. This will get us probably just past halftime, into the third, maybe early the fourth quarter here. If you're looking at it in, as far as a metaphor. Um, so let's start in the uh, the Wasatch. I've got 20 to basically 30 inches through the fifth, and it, it will snow beyond this as well. But that'll get us through the fifth. Up in the uh, the Tetons, probably three feet um, yet to go in the Tetons, and of course more, potentially more up in Yellowstone and a lot more over the Wind Rivers. And, and again, it may snow beyond this in, in some places. Up in um, Montana, uh, up the numbers for Big Sky and Bridger Bowl and Red Lodge to 15 to 20. You'll notice when I showed you that snow accumulation plume, it actually does go back and, and, and it kind of hits those areas squarely. So I had to up those numbers. And over two feet for Sun Valley, uh, Brundage, Bogus Basin, um, but a lot of the emphasis has shifted out of Canada now. You may still get another 6 to 10 up there through a lot of the interior. Pacific Northwest, maybe another foot. Big stuff still to go in California. The issue, of course, with this first storm is the higher snow level, the high rain snow line, which is, you know, eight to 9,000 feet, and maybe at times it's at 9,500 briefly, but the second storm system that comes in will be colder. But this only gets us through the fifth right here. Um, looking at probably four feet over the top of Tahoe above 8,500 feet, we'll say. Um, down at Mammoth, your snow comes later in the period, but looking at two feet, maybe more. We'll see the exact track. In Colorado, the spillover, six to 12 inches through the northern mountains, the flat top, Steamboat, Buff Pass, Cameron Pass those areas. And then the I-70 corridor, the Central Mountains, probably four to six inches of accumulation. You'll start to get snow with that second storm, the rest of the state, especially the I-70 corridor. And again, that timeline for Colorado, two, five, six, seven, and eight, you could have heavy snow accumulation. 
Um, that's where I'm really banking on some of these numbers across the I-70 corridor going up, and they're going to end up being higher than this because, again, it will snow beyond the 5th here and probably sink down into the southern mountains beyond this. So really good numbers, I mean. In the northeast, um, a couple, three different chances for light to moderate snow accumulation. Um, probably four to eight inches here, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Even Massachusetts could get some fours. Snow Ridge, a little bit of lake effect coming through there. So that's how you're going to benefit. Um, we're going to end on the big uh, western map here. Uh, enjoy the powder days ahead. We're you know, really at, in the first quarter here of this atmospheric river setup. We still have a long way to go before the end of the game. Um, some big numbers measured in feet. I mean, you can see the bullseyes. Just be careful out there, and I appreciate you tuning in here, and I'll keep things updated. Have a great day.